Okay guys, some quick things you need to know about today's video. I recently set out a survey with all 54 maps on it and asked 14 competitive players over 12,000 trophies to select the most competitive brawlers for every map. I then analyzed the data to bring you guys the best brawlers for every single map in Brawl Stars. Brawlers with gold frames had at least 50% of the pros agreeing on their competitiveness, while brawlers with black frames had at least 25% agreeance. Just to make things more interesting for you, I also listed the brawlers in order from the most confident to the least confident on how good the brawler is for that specific map. Now the modes are going to be listed alphabetically starting with Bounty and ending with Siege. And we'll also be going through the maps alphabetically so you should be able to use this video as some sort of a catalog if you're ever dealing with a difficult map in the future. I will not be spending the time to talk about every single map individually a ton because nobody here has the time to watch an hour long video. But I will try to hit at least one interesting point for each map. Hope you guys enjoy! <laughs> Okay guys, we're gonna go ahead and start this off with Bounty. Bullpen is your typical Bounty map with Brock, Piper, and Penny up at the top with some other interesting choices such as Mortis and Ricochet. Dry Season actually does not have a whole lot of variation on the map, but it is a longer ranged map, which gives some of the tankier long range brawlers like Pam and Bo some use against Brock, Piper, and Penny. Excel has a ton of walls which allows throwers to thrive, which then allows assassins like Mortis and Daryl to thrive as well because they're such good counters. And due to the close range combat, Piper is actually much less agreed upon uh, than Brock is for this map. Hideout is one of the best thrower maps to play on because of the protective walls in the middle. And Layer Cake is one of the best assassin maps to play brawlers like Mortis, Daryl, and Leon on because of these protective walls. Shotgunners certainly thrive on Snake Prairie, but the best comp is a maxed out bow with a Brock and Piper. Crow can act as a competitive replacement if you do not have a maxed bow. And Bo is actually much less competitive on this map if you do not have his star power. One thing that's interesting about Temple Ruins is that Gene is actually able to check bushes from a long distance away, which makes him a very interesting option. And up next, we've got Brawl Ball, guys. Backyard Bull is a very normal Brawl Ball map with Terra, Spike, and Nita as the best brawlers. Pinball Dreams is very different where we have heavy tanks like El Primo, who is really good here. And that actually makes Terra one of the less competitive options than she normally is on the other maps. Granted, you can still absolutely play her. Although a very normal Brawl Ball map, Pinhole Punt is an interesting one to see Rico get some good viability here. Aside from the traditionally really excellent brawlers for Brawl Ball, Puddle Splash has a ton of cover that actually makes Daryl and El Primo some really solid options. Because of all of the bushes on Sneaky Fields, this map tends to have a lot more tankier brawlers on it. As such, Shelly is actually a really great option to counter them. Super Stadium is a very normal Brawl Ball map that is that I actually don't have very much to say about. It's pretty typical. And then we have Triple Dribble, which has one of the most narrow metas in the game. And interestingly, you'll see that Rico actually has some good viability here played on the right side. Okay, guys, up next, we've got Gem Grab. Bouncing Echo is not your typical Gem Grab map. The narrow corridors make it so that Piper, Rico, and even Brock are really solid options here, with Pam as the typical gem carrier, which we'll see a lot of. For Cell Division, interestingly, we have Jean and Terra that are both really great options due to their ability to pull Brawl while still hiding in the bush. And for Chill Cave, one of the most interesting things is the choice of Penny over Pam as a gem carrier because of that protective wall she can throw her turret behind, with Barley as a competitive option that also brings Mortis in as a solid counter. We also have Crystal Cavern, which is a traditional gem grab map with your best comp as Spike, Nita, and Pam, typically with Pam in the middle and Spike and Nita on the sides. And then we have Death Cap Cave, which is a very thrower-heavy map. Where this map is a little bit more open than other thrower maps, the Assassin of Choice is actually going to to Leon than Daryl or Mortis. And then we have Deep Siege, which is another thrower map where Mortis is actually the choice assassin. Another interesting thing to note is the choice between Pam and Penny is actually very close on this map. Diamond Dust is a really great map for Bull, which also makes it a great map for Shelly to counter against him. Rico also works here because of the walls, and Bo can be a very solid option if he has his star power. Double Swoosh has a typical gem grab meta, though Poco does actually have some viability as a gem carrier because he has such a wide attack that can that is great for checking bushes. Escape Velocity has a very wide meta with lots of solid options. Throwers, controllers, assassins, and spawners are all great options here. Flooded Map is a fun map where Frank is actually uniquely a competitive option here. Typically, he hides in the bush and waits for the right moment for him to use his super. And for Foursquare, there's a lot of walls which allows for assassins to be great options as well as Barley and Rico. On Hard Rock Mine, the walls are perfectly positioned to actually make it so that Rico is the most competitive brawler in the hands of a very skilled Rico. And one interesting thing
interesting thing about Spring Trap is that Shelly and Poco are very unique to this map. Shelly typically would charge up her super and then use that spring to jump into the middle and blast somebody away, while Poco is very viable because he can check those bushes with his very wide attack. The shape and size of the grass on Stone Fort allows El Primo, Frank, and Terra to be great options to surprise the enemy team with. And Undermine is actually not very different than most of the gem grab maps where Spike, Pam, and Nita are excellent options for this map. Okay, we're a little over halfway through here. I hope you guys aren't bored. This video is rather dry. But it's got some great info in it. Up next, we've got the heist maps. Bridge Too Far is a very different heist map that celebrates long-range brawlers, which actually makes it the only map that Piper is competitive in. On Corner Case, the safe in the corner that is protected by restricted lanes with grass on it make for a defensive Brock or Rico as solid defenders, while Daryl and Bull are great for going on the offense. Crow is also a great option here. Forks Out is a great map for throwers, long-range shooters, and short-range brawlers that can super onto the safe. And on Kaboom Canyon, having a brawler that can check the middle of the bush is a great option which explains the usefulness of Pam, Crow, and Poco. Rolling Rumble is a very good map for throwers. Also, it is great for brawlers that are good at closing the gap such as El Primo or Bull. Due to how wide open safe zone is by the safe, long range brawlers are really great options here. Dynamite is also the preferred thrower here because of his star power and being able to jump over the river. And Split Second heavily favors long range brawlers. Daryl is actually a great option here because he can roll to the safe from the middle of the bush by supering onto the water. The mountain shape of the walls on this map make it a great for throwers, as well as Bull and Daryl, not to mention Rico, who can use the walls to cover a lot of area. Up next is solo and duo showdown maps. Reminder that with certain strategies, you can literally push any brawler in showdown, but the brawlers we're about to go over are the most competitive for showdown. Cavern Churn has lots of bushes, which makes Shelly and Bull great options. Bo is great here if he has his star power, and Rico is the best early game because of all of the corridors. Double Trouble is a very wide open map making Brock and Piper the best. Leon is also great due to people not suspecting him when he's invisible. Now Leon is actually the most agreed on brawler for most of these showdown maps and Dune Drift is no exception with Daryl also being a great option. On Erratic Blocks I wanted to remind you that Bo is only great on this map with his star power or if you're incredibly skilled and the large amount of bushes particularly around the center also makes Bull a great option. Now Eye of the Storm despite it being very wide open range there are a lot of bushes as well. This allows for both long range and short range brawlers to thrive on this map. With a surplus of boxes in the middle hidden by bushes on Feast or Famine, close range brawlers like Bull, Shelly, and El Primo do really well. One thing to note about Frank is that he is really great on duos, but not so great on solos. Hot Point is a very wide open map. There are a lot of hiding places as well, which makes it a great map for Daryl. Overall, it seems that Island Invasion does work best for brawlers that are do really well with bushes, despite it being relatively open in the middle. Also, this is one of the best maps for you to push Crow on. Passage is a very wide open map with lots of bushes. It makes it perfect for long range brawlers like Piper and Brock, as well as assassins such as Leon and Daryl. Rockwall Brawl has the largest number of competitive brawlers out of all of the maps in the game. Assassins and throwers seem to thrive the best, but control brawlers such as Spike and Nita also seem to do really well. Scorch Zone is another wide open map with lots of bushes, making it perfect for long range brawlers and assassins. Skull Creek tends to mostly be dominated by throwers, especially ones that team together. The best counters are Mortis and Leons. And once again, there are a lot of really great brawler options for this map. Stormy Plains is yet another map dominated by throwers and therefore attracts a lot of assassin brawlers. And Thousand Lakes is perfect for long range brawlers such as Brock and Piper, as well as Leon and Daryl as assassins. Pam and Colt also do pretty great here as well-rounded brawlers. <laughs> okay guys, we're almost done here. Up next is Siege. Bot Drop is a very wide open map, making long ranged controllers very great for it. Also, you might want to make sure you're always checking the bush, especially if the enemy team has a penny. Otherwise, you might sneak up onto your side of the map and drop a turret, which will slowly eat away your Ike. On Nuts and Bolts, throwers work excellent because they can avoid Mavit damage by circulating around the square blocks. Some assembly required is an excellent map for Bull, who can actually use the walls and the bushes on the side for protection. Rico also really throws thrives here because of the walls as well. Guys, that was absolutely nuts. I cannot believe that I took the time to go over all that with you guys. If you've got a friend that you know loves Brawl Stars just as much as you do, I would really appreciate it if you went and shared this video with them. And also, I wanted to give a huge thank you to the pro players that really helped with putting all of this video together. Also, I wanted to give a huge thank you to my YouTube members and Patreon sponsors for helping support the channel and for you guys for subscribing because I know that you're doing that right now. For now, this is Kairos time ticking by and we will see you in Brawl Stars.